I don't have to, I don't wear masks like him. Every time you see him, he's got a mask. He could be speaking 200 feet away from it. He shows up with the biggest mask I've ever seen. Welcome back. Mayor Lori Lightfoot makes a move to pass Bill de Blasio in the worst mayors of America race. The New York Times makes several oopsies this week. Donald Trump is back in the crosshairs for not condemning white supremacy and the writers of 2020, those sinister motherfuckers, gave us another surprise. The Donald and Melania have both tested positive for COVID-19. Let's get into it. Let's start with the main story of the day. Short but important. Hours after White House senior staffer Hope Hicks tested positive for COVID-19, President Trump and Melania got tested and both came out positive. This could be huge. President Trump is 74 years old. This could do some serious damage. Or maybe it does nothing. The newest report said that the president's experiencing mild symptoms, whatever that may be. Now, the next debate's on what, 12, 13 days? Quarantine's supposed to be 14 days, so what does that mean? Is the debate canceled? Is it postponed? What does it mean for the election? This could have incredible ramifications. Or it could be nothing. But it could ultimately end in the death of the president of the United States, and that's not good. Not good. The New York Times made several oopsies this week. And since we're talking about the virus, let's start with the virus-related oopsie. The New York Times published a story with the headline reading, Behind the White House Effort to Pressure the CDC on School Openings. Let me read the most egregious part to you. The White House seized on a bar chart that the CDC distributed that week to other agencies, which showed that 60% of the coronavirus deaths were people over the age of 75. Officials asked the CDC to provide a new chart to show people 18 and under as a separate group, rather than including them as a normal in an under 25 category, in an effort to demonstrate that the risk for school-aged children was relatively low. Actually, it's not normal to lump everyone under 25 for COVID, especially when you're trying to figure out the effects on school-aged children. 0 to 18. In the same article, they claim that a South Korean study said that children, school-aged children, transmit the virus at least as much as adults do, which is, you know, fake news. Zainab Tufeki, a liberal journalist working with The Atlantic, so you know she's a left-wing never-Trumper, called the New York Times out on this and said, hey, that's not what the South Korean study showed at all. But were there any significant corrections? We bet there weren't. In fact, other news sources quoted them and published their own little version of misinformation because they trusted the New York Times. Hashtag sad. Now, the worst thing that came out of the New York Times this week was actually not COVID-related. They published a piece, Propaganda, Simping for China. Look at this title. Hong Kong is China. Like it or not. I'm not making this up. That's the New York Times for you. And it gets worse. In the article, it says that pro-democracy protests and advocates are harming the nation. Let me read you a quote. The West tends to glorify these people as defenders of Hong Kong's freedoms, but they have done great harm to the city by going against its constitutional order and stirring up chaos and disaffection toward our motherland. Wow. Okay, so what about the protests in America? Are they causing a constitutional crisis by sowing disaffection towards the motherland? Not according to the New York Times. Sad. And if you really want to know how much the New York Times is fake news, check this out. A recording was leaked of executive editor Dean Baquet. In this recording, you could hear Baquet saying how the, the Times has to shift its narrative from the Russia-Trump collusion to Trump is racist. This comes after the Mueller report failed to establish a connection between tr Russia and the Trump campaign. So not only was the New York Times reporting on shenanigans for the last four years, when it's debunked by special prosecutor Mueller, they just switched the narrative to another baseless claim. Trump is racist. And how are they doing this? Well, along with most major media outlets, they're saying that Trump's failure to disavow white supremacy is quite racist. But has he failed to disavow white supremacy? Hmm. I don't even want to play these clips, but this is a news show, so I had to. Here's a compilation of racist President Trump failing to disavow white supremacy. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything 
we hold dear as Americans. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. We are a nation founded on the truth that all of us are created equal. We are equal in the eyes of our Creator. We are equal under the law. And we are equal under our Constitution. Those who spread violence in the name of bigotry strike at the very core of America. How many times do I have to reject? I've rejected David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. Now, I have been asked this question so many times. I have rejected it so many times. Huh. Looks like he disavowed it plenty of times. So why is this back in the news? Ah, because Chris Wallace asked Donald Trump in the debate if he would once and for all disavow white supremacy. The funny thing about that is as I was watching it, I got a little deja vu. I didn't know if it was 2016, 2020, what was going on. Totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. It was very clear. That question was also talked about in the form of groups. Groups. I want to know which groups are you talking about? You have to tell me which groups. Ultimately, he got to the Ku Klux Klan, which obviously I'm going to disavow. And by the way, if you look on my Twitter account, almost immediately after the program, they were disavowed again. You know, it's amazing. When I do something on Twitter, everybody picks it up, goes all over the place. But when I did this one, nobody ever picks it up. Take a look at my Twitter account. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Senator Rubin. Are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha and as we've seen in Portland? Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do that? Specific- and by the way, here's a little clip of the Proud Boys, the white supremacist organization that Wallace and Biden claim that Trump won't disavow. I will go out and say that the Proud Boys as a whole, I will say this on behalf of the entire national organization, denounce white supremacy. We are in no way, shape or form white supremacists. We have a vetting system that just gets those guys out of our hair. We do not have anything to do with white supremacy. We do not have anything to do with the Ku Klux Klan. We denounce those organizations. Where's the white supremacy at, bruh? The day following the debate, we had another Fox News journalist playing hardball with the beautiful Kylie Mackinnon on whether or not Trump will ever disavow white supremacy. Start off, um, I'd like to ask you for a definitive and declarative statement without ambiguity or deflection. As the person who speaks for the president, does the president denounce white supremacism and groups that espouse it in all their forms? This has been answered yesterday by the president himself, the day before by the president himself on the debate stage. The president was asked this. He said, sure, three times. Yesterday, he was point blank blank asked, do you uh, denounce white supremacy? And he said, I've always denounced any form of that. I can go back and read for you um, in August 2019 in one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. In August of 2017, racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals. And th- including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups. I have an entire list of these quotes that I can go through with you. He has condemned white supremacy more than any president in modern history. Just to clear it up this morning, can you, naming it, make a declarative statement that you denounce, that the president denounces it? I just did. Uh, The president has denounced this repeatedly. The The president was asked this. You're making, you're contriving a storyline and a narrative. I'm just asking you to put this to rest. I just did. I read you all of the quotes. And if you need to see them in writing, I will put them in an email. Hold on. So, Haley, can can you right now denounce white supremacy and the group that is found? The president has denounced white supremacy, the the KKK, and hate groups in all forms. He signed a resolution to that effect. Uh, The president just last week, perhaps you all weren't covering it, but just last week expressed his desire to see the KKK prosecuted as domestic terrorists. This president uh, had advocated for the death penalty for a white supremacist, the first federal execution in 17 years. His record on this is unmistakable, and it's shameful. That the me- How many times does she have to say it? And if she says yes, well, oh, we need to hear from the president's mouth. 
And then this brave journalist, journalist, had this to say. For all of you on Twitter who were hammering me for answering that, <laughs> qu for asking that question, I don't care because it's a question that needs to be asked. And clearly, the president's Republican colleagues a mile away from here are looking for an answer for it, too. So stop deflecting. Stop okay. blaming the media. I'm tired of it. All right. John, Ro that John Roberts is tired of it. So we're oh, are you tired of it? Sad. And there's people saying, oh, oh, you see, even Fox News is calling President Trump out. Fox News is trash, just like all of them. Tucker Carlson's interesting. Fox News is trash. And all of this talk about Trump being a white supremacist or not disavowing white supremacist, you know who actually had a good relationship with white supremacists? You know who actually gave a eulogy at the funeral of a white supremacist? Good old, empathetic, nice person, Joe Biden. As also noted, Robert C. Byrd was a parliamentary library, a keeper of the institution of the Senate, and he was the institution itself. But to me, and many people here today, like guys I see, Bill Bradley and Jim Sasser, who long left the Senate for greener pastures, and I hope better remuneration. We used to kid about that too, but I, uh, for a lot of us, he was a friend, and he was a mentor, and he was a guide. The man that Biden is eulogizing, not only was a member of the KKK, he founded a chapter and recruited 150 people. What a great guy. Good old Joe's friends. Sad. And last, we have Lori Lightfoot. Mayor Lori Lightfoot of Chicago. She has made several moves trying to overtake Ted Wheeler and Bill de Blasio on the worst mayor of America race. Now, is it because her city had 330 murders this year? No. Is it because she banned protests on her street but allows them everywhere in the city? No. Is it because she refuses federal help when her city is overrun by crime? No, no, no. It's because of Halloween. Specifically, because Mayor Lori Lightfoot did the cringiest thing I've seen in a while. And I'm going to share it with you. Wow, it gives me goosebumps when I see that. What was she thinking? Oh, it's going to look good. I'm going to be more popular. It's going to get likes and retweets. I don't know, but sad. At a time when we're surrounded by fake news, cringe, incompetent mayors, a pandemic, raging wildfires, a recession, and a presidential election, the writers of 2020 gave us a presidential infection. How will this change things? Will Trump recover quickly? Will he die? Is Lori Lightfoot the cringiest thing you've ever seen? Comment down below. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. Ginger out.